More twists and turns in the investigation and the scandal surrounding Governor David Patterson's alleged wrongdoings. Attorney General Andrew Cuomo this past week removing, removing himself from the investigation into whether Mr. Patterson illegally took World Series tickets or had improper conduct, contact with a woman who accused the governor's top aide of domestic violence. There are many who thought Mr. Cuomo should have recused himself earlier than he did. If there wasn't a direct conflict of interest, there at least seemed to be the appearance of one. After insisting he could do the job, Mr. Cuomo has now handed the investigation over to the state's retired chief judge, Judith Kay. So was this politically motivated, and what does the delay in the investigation mean for Governor Patterson? Joining us for a roundtable discussion, three esteemed people. Errol Lewis, the LA News columnist and host of WWRL Radio Morning Show. Chris Smith, far left, New York Magazine writer, and I News political reporter, Dave Evans. Gentlemen, welcome to all of you. Thank Errol, you. let me begin with you. You know, we were talking, uh, the hourglass seemed to be running out last week on Governor Patterson. Now, you don't hear that so much. We're not counting the hours. He's not dominating every front page. Um, he says that he's ready to work on the budget. In fact, he's saying, what's taking the legislature so long? I've submitted my budget and I'm ready to go. So he is um, snapping back. He's trying to achieve some sense of normalcy, even though he's lost a whole bunch of senior staff people. Uh, these questions are still lingering out there. He's trying to redefine the, what normal will be, and it looks like he's succeeding. And Chris, his credibility, he seems to have lost a lot of that with the general public as well. Sure. I mean, this past week has been yet another reminder that any predictions about what will happen in the life of David Patterson are, mm -hmm. are pretty worthless. Um, yeah, he's lost a lot of credibility. He got a boost indirectly somewhat this week, I thought, from Lieutenant Ga Governor Ravitch putting forward this uh, budget reform proposal. Patterson hesitated, was a little ambivalent at first, uh, has now seemed to get on board. There seems to be some backing, certainly, from editorial boards. Mayor Bloomberg is edging closer to it. If, if Patterson, via uh, Ravitch, can get a decent budget deal in the next few weeks, that's a big boost. Dave Evans, well, you put us on high alert several times over the last <laughs> three or four weeks been crazy. about Governor Patterson and whether he would step down soon. Uh, what, what's your prediction? Oh, I don't think that we can make a prediction now. I mean, just like Chris said, I I any prediction like that is going to be, you know, Patterson has proved us wrong uh, time, time and time again. I think we were all surprised this week with, with Cuomo's decision to recuse himself from this case. Y you mentioned whether this was a politically motivated decision by Cuomo. Was it? I, I think it was both political and I think there was also a legal decision here. I think what I'm hearing from sources is that every time they in interview one person, it leads to another person, and I think it was taking longer and longer and longer, and they couldn't get this wrapped up in time for him to run for governor. That's when you then slop into the political uh, motivation for his decision here. He saw the poll numbers. He saw that it, you know, a slide of 13 points in just seven days, and I think that he knew that politically he had to make a decision, and I think legally there's some real concern there about how long this investigation is taking. Because he couldn't be investigating the governor when he's running for governor, right, Errol? That's right. That would be awkward. And, you know, look, frankly, in hindsight, of course, we can all see this uh, kind of clearly, but there have been problems with the state police for a number of years. Elliot I mean, Spitzer had some problems, Elliot right? Elliot Spitzer, Joe Bruno made charges. Um, the police superintendent under Pataki had to step down. So this is not going to be something that y you can fix in just a couple of weeks. And w I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's going on here as well. I mean, the last two superintendents uh, under Patterson just left sort of under a cloud. And it's not going to be easy to straighten out what happened. What is up with the state government in New York? It's not just the state police. It's you know, the key, they're the keystone cops, it seems like, in some ways. But the whole legislative process seems to be something of a joke. Yeah, if, if I could come up with a unified theory that, that put together Eric Massa and David Patterson <laughs> and the state senate and, you know. City uh, council. Yeah, uh, <laughs> then I'd, you know, retire. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of it gets back to money. I mean, the, exactly. the fact that the state is broke certainly uh, motivates or, or provokes a lot of <laughs> anxieties on a lot of levels and it's you know people fighting over scraps but you when the state's broke it seems to me that you need you really need the best and the brightest you don't need the people who are there part-time who are trying as we've seen some other state legislators who have been indicted and charged with crimes trying to make money on their own you really need someone to come up step up to the plate and have some good ideas. Well, I, I mean, the, the, the reason why I nodded on the money thing when Chris was, I, I thought you were going to talk about campaign finance. Well, no, sure. Yeah. We, we have a joke of Certainly. a system in New York. I think it's what, 51000 is what the limit is of what you can give to a candidate. I mean, that's Plus unlimited that, 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 amounts it, it, to the party organization. Exactly. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it just, 
breeds a system of corruption, and I think that's why New York is considered such a, uh, the, the state legislature is considered such a laughing stock. Except the U.S. Supreme Court just ruled that, you know, we're yeah, going to open the floodgates for right. the rest of the country. So maybe New York was the vanguard of this <laughs> new movement of throwing out all the campaign financing laws. I think that New York stretches it very far, though, when we have a limit of uh, 51,000. I think that's just, I think a lot of people see it as just obscene, and, and I, I think it just breeds a, a bizarre system of... But w when the people are the people who benefit from that are in charge of changing that, it's not going to They don't want to, yeah. exactly. It's not going right. to happen. Let's talk about the governor's race. We just had Steve Levy here. I, 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 was, I joked about his lack of energy. He's got amazing <laughs> energy. He sounds like a candidate all the way, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely sounded sure. like a candidate to me. Sure. I was a little surprised, quite frankly, because I, maybe I missed something. I didn't think he had declared. But no, he sounded, has not declared yet. <laughs> but I think he's right. But he certainly sounded you like know, a candidate. At this point, what does he have to lose by sounding enthusiastic and gung-ho? I mean, it, it sounds obvious, but he's out there trying to figure out if he can raise the money, too. I mean, he's got to make that practical determination. Uh, you know, the party thing gets him some attention. Uh, you a know. Democrat running as a Republican. Right, yeah, certainly. But he's got to go out there and see if it, it practically can work. There is this coronation uh, attitude a little bit. You know, I mean, you have Cuomo going to run, if he would uh, when he decides to run, will run unchallenged. And you've got Lazio has already been endorsed by Pataki and Giuliani, and yet, Levy said the Republican Party, Ed Cox, came to him. This is a, a, a bipartisan phenomenon, <laughs> and it's related in some ways to what we saw in the city elections when a lot of people, uh, there was a backlash against uh, Mayor Bloomberg trying to get a third term. People don't like being told that their vote doesn't count. They don't like being told that the politicians are going to pick themselves and that they don't have anything to say about it. We saw it in Massachusetts. We've, we see a, a tremendous anti-incumbent mood all throughout the country, including in New York. And um, I think Steve Levy is trying to position himself and trying to figure out if he can ride that wave. And maybe the sledgehammer and all of any philosophy of his it might resonate with some people. I want to talk about the Senate race for a second because uh, the New York Post reported this week that Diana Taylor, Mayor Bloomberg's longtime girlfriend, the former state banking superintendent, may be a candidate to run against Kirsten Gillibrand. I'm going to go way out on a limb and say <laughs> she doesn't run yeah. for anything. Uh, yeah, but there, b beneath that, the, the interesting context is the friction between Bloomberg and Gillibrand. I mean, Bloomberg has had a distaste for Gillibrand from the very beginning. Yeah. He considers her a lightweight. Um, and he's done a lot of things along the way to encourage people to run and, and have his strategists and donor, uh, rich friends, not donors, Bloomberg doesn't have, no, have two donors. <laughs> but one, he has one donor. To, to, to encourage other people to explore the race. Does Pataki run? George Pataki run for this seat? Well, I thought that he wasn't. But, you know, this week when we asked him, uh, when he was at the Lazio event endorsing him for governor uh, at Grand Central Terminal, we thought, we would go ahead and ask Pataki about it, and he didn't really answer it. And I think there were some reporters saying, but you didn't say no, which I thought he'd close the gate on that. But it sounds like maybe it might still be open. You know, whether he, it's it, still whether, a possibility. Whether it's Pataki, Harold Ford, or anybody else, people look at Gillibrand and they, see, they think they see an easy target. Yeah. I think when they get a little closer, they realize maybe not yeah, so maybe easy. Yeah, maybe not so easy. We could dance all night on, this, on these topics. But gentlemen, thank you very much. Chris Smith, Errol Lewis, and Dave Evans. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. As if he doesn't have enough troubles already, Governor Patterson gearing up for another fight with legislators, this time over whether to tax sugary sodas. New York State Health Commissioner Richard Daines joins us next. Stay with us.